uh, you know, for lack of a better clinical term, it's really the blame game. Have you ever had a chance to consider the psychological and emotional impact of family scapegoating on the scapegoat? A lot of people believe that family scapegoats are to blame for the family situation uh, and especially when the family is toxic and dysfunctional and unhealthy and that strictly just isn't the case. Family scapegoating really allows narcissistic parents, unhealthy families to believe that they are actually more healthy than they are. It allows parents who are unhealthy to place blame from the bigger issue onto the child who may actually play a, a, a role in the family that is less than all the other people in the family. So take, for example, the lost child role within a family. This particular child may not know exactly what they want to do in life. They may have struggled from job to job, uh, you know, didn't do well in school or decided not to go to school or decided to do something completely different, like become a parent too soon in life. So that one child who's the lost child, who's confused and perplexed and appears by all appearances to be the problem. So in today's video, I'm going to highlight something that has been defined as and labeled scapegoating syndrome. But before we jump in, let me briefly introduce myself in case you're new to my channel. My name is Tamara. I'm internationally and I'm board certified in trauma therapy. I'm licensed in mental health. I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma uh, for many, many years, 14 years. And now I'm doing this in my private practice. Let's jump in. At the beginning of the video, I made a statement that I think is really important for us to carry throughout the video, which is that the, the scapegoating that happens within a narcissistic uh, family context where there's a narcissistic mother, there's a narcissistic father, uh, the, the children are really appearing to the outside world to be high functioning, and there may be one child who is struggling, a family that is structured in this way often kind of breeds a scapegoat when things go wrong. And this kind of a family context allows a parent to believe that the family is healthier than it actually is because they can take the issues that they see and place it upon the back or the shoulders of one child in that unit while maybe the other siblings are doing really well and are successful in life. This is a dynamic I see a lot of in my practice and I've seen it over the years when I've worked in school districts and psychiatric hospitals, the family dynamic between the narcissistic parents and the siblings often includes that one sibling who's not doing well or maybe they're struggling in life and instead of the parents really focusing in on that child adult child adolescent young child to see what the issue really is they take and place the blame of the family problems onto that child and then that child over time takes the responsibility and the burden of being the problem this kind of thing can be labeled a self-fulfilling prophecy which basically means that if somebody believes that you are a failure and you know that they believe that you are a failure or you feel that they believe that you are a failure or to blame for something, you're probably going to fall into the role that they see you in. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. A lot of that happens in families that include the scapegoat game. And I call it a game because it really is the blame game. It's we have issues because of you instead of we have issues because we have issues. Scapegoating can lead to a lot of issues in adulthood. Research suggests that there's a strong relationship between being the scapegoat in an unhealthy narcissistic family context and becoming an adult alcoholic or substance abuser. You may be asking yourself, how's that a possible link and why? Some people are probably like, yep, that makes sense. Let me talk to those of you who are finding that connection hard to believe. If you grow up in a family where all the blame is placed on you and you feel that energy constantly penetrating your life, right, by people in your family that are supposed to love you and care for you, you're probably going to seek outside of that family context for comfort, support, and love. And so that often entails early sexual experiences, becoming a parent too young, uh, doing risky and irresponsible things, uh, never maturing, right? Still trying to be a child as an adult. Uh, it may also include drinking alcohol and using drugs, right? 
And we all know that addiction is really hard to kick because it, it, it impacts the reward centers of the brain, meaning we get a social, emotional, and sometimes psychological reward for engaging in drinking behaviors and also engaging in using substances. So it's really easy to say, you know what, I think I'm going to go over Billy's house tomorrow night and have me a couple of drinks and smoke some marijuana. That behavior can become a pattern over time, which then causes even bigger problems. And so now we've got a substance abuser on top of being the family scapegoat. Here's what's interesting about this dynamic. Now you, let's say for example, have become really attached to substances because it feeds a part of you that you've always needed filled, right? So your family starts seeing drug behavior. You start spending too much money on marijuana. You're constantly outside smoking marijuana. You're constantly defending your use of it. You're constantly using it to help you feel better, medicinal purposes, right? You're constantly defending your need for it and becoming defensive with other people who have concerns. That same thing can happen with alcohol as well. So what does that unstable, dysfunctional family uh, do to you? Well, they push you even further into the scapegoat role, right? Because now they have a reason to believe you are the problem because you've grabbed a hold of, for lack of a, of a better example, drugs and substances. And now they have a reason to say you're the problem. That is a really tricky dynamic, isn't it? It's a dynamic I see all the time in my private practice. Now, let me give you some examples here of what happens when you are the family scapegoat. So the first thing that is likely to happen is you're gonna be able to uh, see this also very clearly in a narcissistic family. There is, there is a rotation between members of the family when it comes to being a scapegoat. Now, let's say for example, both of your parents are narcissists and you have other siblings who are struggling right Right along with you instead of mom and dad focusing just on your brother over there who is really the problem he, and he's the problem because the whole family has a problem right not because he chose to be a problem the whole family has a problem and it's impacted him the most so let's say that he's tagged the scapegoat he may be the scapegoat for one year you may be the scapegoat for another. He may be the scapegoat for today. You may be the scapegoat for tomorrow, right? There's an alternation. I think that's the right word I'm trying to use. I don't know. We'll change that word because I'm not sure it doesn't sound right to my ears. There is a, there's a rotation between siblings sometimes, right? And in dysfunctional family systems, it's really easy to rotate, you know, rotate between the siblings. You're the scapegoat on Monday you're the scapegoat on Tuesday. The next thing is there's there's going to be accusations of you being the troublemaker within the family. It's just a dynamic that's likely to happen. Anytime you're labeled the scapegoat, you're probably going to be labeled the troublemaker. And that's not a label that can be on you one day and be off the next day. Even if you're being rotated within a family system, right? One day you're the scapegoat, the next day it's your cousin or your brother or your sister. Even though that can happen, you're always going to be labeled the troublemaker. It's not an easy label to kind of, you know, brush off of you. Because because once you're labeled something, people start to see you through that lens. And it can really impact how you see yourself as well. Remember that self-fulfilling prophecy? It's a it's a loop and 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 a triangle, for example. And once you get into that, it's hard to get out. Family mobbing and family bullying is likely to happen if you're the scapegoat. Uh, it's a set of, of behaviors where you feel that you're being harassed and targeted and bullied and disrespected and disregarded by your family. And it continues for a long period of time. Um, the whole family system is the problem here. And you just happen to be one part of this dysfunctional family unit. And yet they're all coming after you like you're the only one who's the problem. That's not okay, but it happens in a lot more families than you think. You may also see a series of family members coming after you to do interventions, right? Interventions. We need to do an intervention because you're a substance abuser. We need to do an intervention because you've been irritable lately and very depressed and refusing to engage in life. There's going to be a process where in order for the family unit that is dysfunctional to keep you as the scapegoat, they have to engage in behaviors, whether that's intentional or unintentional, that's going to keep you in that role. And sometimes those interventions keep 
you in that role of a scapegoat. Uh, we never really think of that when we look at scapegoats or if we feel like we're the scapegoat within a family. We never look at the many ways that the family tries to keep you as the problem, uh, but that's likely the dynamic that's going to be created over time. There's a term that you may not have ever heard clinically, and I'm gonna introduce a new term to the channel. We're gonna do a live chat on this as well in the, in the next few days, but it's called parental projection identification. That's a lot to say. So we're going to break that down. So projection identification is basically the process of a narcissistic parent or a very dysfunctional, unhealthy parent, knowing that within themselves, there's an unhealthy side of them. Instead of owning that and saying, okay, I have a bad side and a good side, and this side of me, I need to change and work on. Instead of doing that, this parent takes that negative side of who they are as the narcissistic parent, and they project it onto you and so now you become the enemy right it's i'm projecting my negative side of myself onto you as the adult child and now i am making you the problem and so that is scapegoating at a clinical level i'm a narcissist and i am projecting the ugly side of myself that i know exists onto you as the child and so therefore you're the problem and not me you're also likely to see what's called tacit and explicit rules and expectations now tacit rules and ex expectations oh my god that's a lot to say in one sentence is basically this tacit means that it's not spoken it's unspoken right there are unspoken expectations and rules within a family that can negatively impact it right you may not necessarily be called the problem but we know that there's an unspoken secret under the surface that you're the problem explicit of course means it's external and everybody can see it that may consist of you being labeled the scapegoat and you being intentionally uh, uninvited to a wedding or a party within the family. There's also a lot of family roles within these kind of dysfunctional families where the parents treat the child a certain way and over time the, the children assume roles, right? It's not like they're being uh, pushed into these roles or encouraged to be a part of these roles, but they adopt them automatically over time. Narcissistic parents, mother and father, can be really difficult to live under and if you have two parents that are narcissistic and different ways, you can see very, very um, clear family roles that everybody has kind of assumed over time. So an example of a family role would be the scapegoat, the lost child that I mentioned earlier, the hero, the one that rescues everyone and does all the wonderful things within the family, right? The successful one, the dominant one, the controller, the, you know, the uh, mascot or the family clown who thinks everything's a joke and, and, and tries to be the most lighthearted one of the group. Group. These roles are assumed over time and they're very dysfunctional. They're not healthy at all. You're also likely to see parentification and parental alienation. That's a lot to say as well. Parentification is you become the parent, right? And you're the sibling or you're the child and you become the parent role within that dysfunctional family unit. There's also parental alienation where a parent kind of takes the children and talks bad about the other parent and hopes that the child would want to walk away and totally forget about that other parent. That is likely to happen as well. Helicopter parenting is also another issue that I see a lot of within families where there's a lot of scapegoating. The helicopter parent just kind of hovers and hovers. And sometimes their helicoptering, I'm going to make up a word here, uh, is really in an attempt to control the situation, especially if it's a narcissistic parent. They want to control the situation and make sure that things come out looking the way that they want it to look. And so they hover. They hover all the time because then that way they can control the situation. Trauma reenactments are likely to happen within these families, uh, meaning that you've had a previous traumatic situation, could be your parent, could be another sibling, could be you, and instead of dealing with it then and resolving it, somehow you bring that that environment, the energy, the mentality, the behaviors from the past into the present, and it kind of possesses, for lack of a, of a better word, your life for that time and it recreates trauma in your world you're also likely to see intergenerational trauma within these families trauma throughout the generations um being successful and and having an over involved parent who doesn't give you the space to grow learn change figure out your life figure out who you are 
none of that. They, they, they don't give you that opportunity. Everything that they want, they live through you for it. And so those kind of over involved parents are unhealthy. Again, if they're narcissistic, they want to take your life over to look good, to experience a new life for themselves. There's always some selfish, dysfunctional, unhealthy reason. For the behavior check out these videos right here if you want to learn a little bit more about this topic and my live chat that i just recently did on this very topic this is complicated guys so i'm coming back with another video thank you so much for your participation in this video today go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and get more videos like this i'll see you in the next one Bye bye